So, uh, let's just to get started, I want to remember this moment because I feel way close to everybody. So, I'm going to take a picture. If anyone would smile, I would very much appreciate it. So, there, all right, there we go. That was beautiful. You guys are a handsome group. Thank you. Um, so, I'm going to talk about gravity forms, advanced custom fields, and uh, my, uh, my indie project that I've been working on called School Twist. Uh, just, we don't have a huge group tonight, and we have a little bit of flexibility, so maybe even more so than other nights. If you have questions or you want me to go in a slightly different direction, feel free to say something, and I could probably accommodate that. So, just to set the, the, the stage so I know our audience, can you help me out? Um, how many, uh, raise your hand, uh, okay, we're going to start off easy. Raise your hand if you've heard of WordPress. That should be everybody. All right. Raise your hand. Keep it up. I'm sorry. Keep it up. Uh, lower your hand. Uh, keep your hand up if you've ever used Gravity Forms or Advanced Custom Fields. Okay. Um, raise your hand. Keep it up if you've also programmed in PHP. All right. Keep it up if you've also like touched the database. All right, okay, so we have a, a nice little mix here. So gravity forms, advanced custom fields. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna talk about uh, gravity forms a little bit, uh, what it is, advanced custom fields, how to use each, and then my side project, School Twist, which is uh, an event registration site, and it's for after school registration for kids that take classes after school. I've used uh, gravity forms and advanced custom fields quite a bit in that, and so I'll delve into that a little bit, just kind of see how that, how these both can be used in sort of an extreme case. So forms on WordPress, there's kind of, seems to be broken up into two worlds. Uh, collecting data from your visitors, this is front facing, somebody shows up to your website, you want to learn a little bit about them, there's probably some call to action. Maybe you just want a poll of random people, whether they like, but you probably want to get their email, you probably want to get their money, you're trying to do something to these visitors. There's the other side of data from your users, people that can log into your WordPress, WordPress page and do something. So these are custom fields on the admin side. Um, so Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms is all about getting data from the users. There are some other form uh, systems out there. I'm familiar with Gravity Forms. I think Ninja Forms and some more. And for Gravity Forms, at least, not only do you want that data, you want to do something with that data. So kind of the pros of this, easy to collect on the front end. You don't have to code anything. Uh, you can have a complex form, so you can have multiple pages. And the data is very actionable. But it's all on the front end. It's not back end stuff. So we're going to want to do something like you know, I have a WordPress page here and I'm just collecting something simple. What colors do you like? Um, so, what does that look like? So, on the back end, you have the Gravity Forms plugin, and I'll jump into this some more. And when you go to make a new form, it says, hey, here are the fields you have over here, bring them over. So, in this case, I did a radio button and asked what color she'd like. Once you bring the radio button over, you click on it, you expand it, you can do your favorite colors, you can add a little description there, and you add your fields. Pretty straightforward, right? Then when you go to your post, you click the form, it shows you the list of forms you have, you throw it in there with a the sharp code, and then we're back where we started. Great. So once people collect some stuff, then it shows here's the data they, they entered, and you can do something with it. You can click on that, you can see this was a simple form that I showed, but it might be 15 questions, including an email. It might be a little diagnostic about their intentions. So if you have a site and say you know, you're trying to get customers, potential clients, you can dismiss the ones that are you know, spam, you can dismiss the ones that are, you know, they want your help, but you can tell by the profile that they're not your target audience. Or you could, you know, say, all right, this is perfect for me, and you can flag it. 
So let me uh, let me go over here, and we'll do a really simple form on gravity forms, and then I'll show you a more complex one. So where's my where's my mouse? Hang on for a second. All right. So my mouse comes back. Terrific. So I'm on gravity forms, ah. and we saw this guy here, favorite fall colors, gray, uh, some various settings, where you want to place the labels, you know, fantastic. And then we have our entries, so I could uh, pick it, mark as red, mark as unread, so on. I could view it, I can make notes to myself, I can resend a notification, so there's some useful things we can do there. So I'm going to make a new form. We'll call it uh, meeting, and I will let's say I want to start off with a single line of text. So I want the person to enter it, and I'll just say um, first first name. Please give it. I need your name to understand understand your personality. Okay, this doesn't make sense, but that's all right. And I'm going to say it's required. Then what can we do? Let's say, well, then we'll say uh, email. Yep, self-explanatory. We won't make that required, but let's go a little bit more, slightly more clever, and we'll do a radio button. And we'll say uh, mailing list. It's like, would you like me to reach out to you? Let's call, say that. I'll call that contact. And so it starts off with three choices. No, I don't want that. Uh, I'll just say yes for contact and no. And if you need to, I use this all the time on my stuff, I, I assign the values. If you don't do that, it'll just keep the text and that's fine too. But here's where it gets mildly clever, is down here on the email, I can go to the advanced and then make it conditional and say, if contact is yes, then I'm gonna show it. Well, since they said yes, it's okay to make it required now. And that's, that's not a problem. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, of course. Is that better? Thank you. Um, so then, let me just make a quick post here. And um, I'll say consulting services. It will be great. And we'll add the form. We'll select which one. Okay, we're going to do the meeting, and then we'll insert the form. Now, if I go over to this page and I get to the consulting services, that would show up. Why isn't it showing up? I'm going to have to publish this. Go to the consulting services, and then we have, okay, so we got JJ, contact me. And if I hit no here, that goes away, but yes, then it's required. So, yeah, okay, sure. So we've got it, great. And if I go back to our forms, we'll see that if I go to the entries, go to the meeting, all right, here's my information, and I can take a look at it. I'm like, OMG, must contact him. We're gonna be rich. All right, so. So that's gravity forms on the front end, collecting, collecting the information from your collecting information from your visitors. Let me give you. Make sure I'm here. All right. So let me give you just what a more complex scenario looks like. Now this is um, a work in progress from my school twist site. Uh, I use the pro version of Gravity Forms, and one of the tricks that they have, if you have a multi-site installation, 
you can use a gravity form to register a user and you can use it to create a new site, to kick off the new site process. So I use this on my commercial site. Uh, I have like a sales site, you know, I, I pitch people on school twists and then when they're ready to sign up, I shunt them over to this gravity form. So this gets slightly complicated as First thing I ask, are they trying to register their child for a class? I don't want them to register their child for a class. That's, you know, for my, my clients, the school uses my site, and then they register their child for a class. But sometimes I find they come up to my site and sign up for the real thing. So I've grabbed it on the next page and said, hey, you're wrong. And I flagged it so the next button doesn't go away. You're on the wrong site. So, well, let's say they're really looking for a program, yep, and maybe they're part of the PTA or, or PTO. I ask them what they're gonna do, so this all helps me figure out how seriously I should take their sign up. And I'm gonna put some, some dummy information in here. So I ask for their, you know, their email, their phone number. Uh, ask them to create a username. Create a password. They have an option button on uh, some information about the strength of their password. Um, now I'm gathering stuff about their short domain so they can make their own website. And if you have a multi-site and you're not familiar with it, there's two installation options. You can do it kind of directory based or DNS based. And if it's DNS, the further URL will be their site name. So So we get the information. Now here, I'm using, use this concept called power-ups. It's just like plug-in and it's kind of easier to communicate. But you can go in and if you're familiar with HTML, you can make your, uh, your highlights. I put an image in and then I refer to it, the image is on the site. So you have some ways to kind of spruce it up. Uh, I guess they, they don't restrict you to just text. So if you want to be flexible, you can do that. Um, so anyway, so that's a complex gravity form. So let's keep on going and get to advanced custom fields. So advanced custom fields, this is collecting things on the admin side. And you really is only useful if you know PHP, if you're doing stuff with your theme or you're making your custom plugins, that's where it comes up. So it's great for, um, if you're familiar with, uh, like, like the, uh, gosh, I forget what they call it, but the meta fields that you could add to a post. This has been around longer than that, and you could get complex fields uh, attached to uh, option pages, posts, pages, and stuff like that. So if you're on the admin screen, and you might tag it to be part of a category, say, if it's a post. And then here we have our radio boxes, so it's sort of the same thing. It's done a little differently, but there's a lot of emphasis on where do you want this form to show up. And as you can see, there's actually quite a bit of choices for um, you know what you could do: the text box, text area, the number, the range, the email. And then there's some complicated things to kind of let your user do some real input. So you could have repeated fields. So you could say, do text, and let them keep doing more text, like. So they can enter text and then another row, then another row. You can go text, number, image, and repeat that pattern. You can put in tabs. So you can really get, you know, quite sophisticated. It's, it's complicated. I have found the biggest challenge isn't can you get it all into a page, but can you make it understandable by your user? So I had this super complex multi-tab form, and it was box, box, tap, tap, tab, and it was too complicated. So now I'm putting a lot of energy into ripping that out and spreading it across pages and putting kind of filters on the front to keep them away from uh, settings that they're not gonna need. So let's get back to a little demo here. All right. Uh, get over here. So, 
run custom fields and the um, uh, I'll take a look here so if I want a logo I could edit now let me let me just make it well so like I'm uh, uh, I'll, sorry let me make a totally new one here so I will do uh, I'm adding a field, and so if I need simple text, then I am giving a, uh, so this would be like, what would I do? I'll, I'll do like product name, come with a product name, uh, enter the product we are trying to sell. So at this point, you're the programmer, and you're trying to put together the, the WordPress site for either future future you or other users of your site. So if I'm collecting product name and SKU, then that means, hey, I'm expecting somebody to enter hundreds of product names and SKUs. If it weren't that, you would instead just be entering you know, the, uh, the free text. So then I could go add another one, and I'll say SKU. Now I'll do uh, like quant uh, quantity and stock. So that way we can do a number. And then maybe even the SKU. All right, fine. Uh, and we'll make that a, you know, a URL or something like that. So then I can make it, uh, the, have this show up whenever I'm doing a post type of of say, no, I, I'm gonna, I better do this as, actually, sorry, give me just a second here, make sure I'm on the right site. All right, so, um, oops, sorry. So this would have it come up with a post type of, uh, I have some custom post types on here, but it could be instructor, or what would be maybe a better, a better uh, one here, I have option page on here, okay. where am I? Use role, I could do option page, and I think this will work if I go to, I'm doing this on the fly, so this might not work, but let's cross our fingers. If it doesn't work, I'll show you something else. So here's this page where I have these other advanced custom fields showing up on here. And let's go down to the bottom and see if that showed up. Yep, and here's our stuff asking for product name, quantity, and SKU. So you have to grab this. You can put this on an option page. You can put this on a page page, on a front end page. You can put this on posts. You tell it to show up with just a certain category, which could be kind of cool. So whoever your author is, they could flag it and say, this is an article about fall. So, hey, if it's fall, then you want questions about fall to show up for the author to help with your branding or to help with, with whatever. Um, now, I've used this in a way, I have these power-ups, and we saw that on the registration side where I was collecting this initial information. But that's this one-time front-facing thing. Now on my site, I need them to be able to modify this information. It doesn't really make sense for them to go back to the front end, because that's not for them anymore. Now this is for their particular site. So I wish I could put this all together in one, but I'm re-asking it with advanced custom fields, with, um, again, referring to an image, putting some text, I have yes, no boxes on here, and so like I do this thing where I have a location and I'm asking the user, you have this registration site, is, this a, is there a real location? Is this like part of a school or is this just an online course? Well, if they say yes, this is part of a school, then I ask them some additional stuff. And what I've done there is, just like I did on the Gravity Forms, I did conditional saying, if they answer yes, make this show up. So no, it's not there. Yes, it's there. 
And then I have a whole slew of follow-on things for them to ask. Um, so what I do now, this is my, my deep admin side. So I have, if I look at my custom fields, yep, I can leave there. Uh, um, on my deep admin side, I have a bunch of custom fields, advanced custom fields. And you have the ability to export it to a JSON file or export it to PHP. And I actually have this. Let me show you just what it looks like quickly and how you might use that. And don't worry, I can go to viewable mode here, I think. Show me, show me, show me, show me. Hang on. Let me try this again. Nah, cut it off my top. So let me bear with me for a second. So if I try this one more time. Sorry, that worked earlier today. Um, if I am here, so with my power-ups, I have some power-up code here, and then I have, uh, it's actually here. So then in here, I wrote code to go in and automatically import our JSON export. And it does things like the key field, the label, and so on. So it's not super easy to work with, and I found I had to write my own routines to grab the information I needed. But the upside is I was able to get these admin pages kind of quickly, uh, relatively speaking. So, where does that leave us? So, in School Twist, just to show you what the final product kind of looks like. So, if you sign up for a site, and so you can kind of see what we're getting into. So, on the front end, you have this home page. You can look at a course catalog and filter by your grades. And you can see what classes are available. In this case, it's just the one class. And then you have a registration form that you could go to. And then you could register for the class. Um, I found getting this form here, it was not helpful to try to do that in either Gravity Forms or Advanced Custom Fields. This is just HTML form, and I found it wasn't useful. I guess um, there wasn't enough control. I ended up putting a lot of logic in here, a lot of data checking, that, and a lot of it's dynamic, so that wasn't appropriate. Um, so then you would go and you'd be able to register for the class. So that's like the purpose of the site. I do have this advanced option where I give the users the ability to use an event, uh, gravity forms to add their own custom questions to the registration process, and that's pretty useful, but it's still pretty complicated. It's not realistic to ask a random user to be able to do that. And so, although it works, you don't want your users to use the gravity forms. You could use it yourself, because you're kind of serious about it, you know what you're doing, but your users, even if they're kind of sophisticated users, they're not going to be that into it. Now, on the back end, I went through and I've cleared a lot of this stuff out. My goal is to make it so you can't tell it's WordPress, but you'll recognize it. And so I have you know, some dashboards here. I have courses that people make, and when they make the course, you know, we list it here. This is extra, but when you go in and edit it, I do a course. This is advanced custom field down there. So I'm collecting a little bit of extra information. Uh, when I come to uh, the settings, 
So when I go to my settings pages, these are all advanced custom fields, um, advanced custom fields, advanced custom fields, and so on. So um, if I'm inviting users, I do some uh, proprietary stuff that has to be custom. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a mix between the two. So to summarize it, uh, you have on the front end gravity forms and things like that are great for collecting data from the users. You get these entries, you can act on it. On the back end, you better know PHP. You have to be doing stuff with themes, and that's for your admin users. You can be pretty sophisticated, yet still uh, be worried about making it too complex, or they won't be able to follow it. And if you're trying to do kind of some high-end production stuff, you're going to end up doing lots and lots of programming to pull the pieces together. All together, for this complicated of a site, the Gravity Forms, Advanced Cuts and Fields, great for prototyping. I liked that a lot. Did it save me time? Um, maybe. Uh, for really advanced sites, it's, it's a bit of a toss-up. So, uh, that's that. If you have any questions, that's my contact information and I'll be around. But is there anything else anyone would like to know or like me to go towards? Yes? Uh, maybe a little off topic, but sorry. Yeah, no problem. This might be a little off topic, but uh, the e-commerce symbol is that uh, working to these plugins and you can code that yourself. Uh, I coded that myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, this may have changed, but it has a Stripe uh, plugin, or there's a Stripe item there uh, for, the, for the credit cards. I did something called, I uh, used a thing called Stripe Connect, and so my schools, they create a Stripe account, and then I handle the registration process, and then I make a small fee off the top. But when I made that, there wasn't anything that would let you put that in your WordPress. So I have this thing that I'm pretty happy about. So my users will go to the settings page, and there's a Stripe Connect button saying, hey, click this, get your stuff, and I have all the back end that says, yeah, you know, secure it, lock it down, don't let them change it.